Are you an INFP and do you sometimes feel pushed or overwhelmed by the world around you? My name is Eric Thor and I've been studying flow for a long time. I've been studying the connection between flow and personality and I believe everybody has a flow type, who they are at their best, what they need to do to be happy and healthy as an individual. As an INFP, I believe it's important that you nurture your own inner world and that you build up a solid idea of what your purpose is in this world. Now, I believe it's important for flow to make sure that you have healthy relationships in your life. And that means that you have people you can talk to, people that understand and accept you the way you are. Beyond that, I think it's important to make sure that you avoid a negative internal dialogue. That means avoid dwelling on past mistakes. Avoid thinking too critically about yourself. Work towards being kind towards yourself. Build a positive, self-reinforcing monologue. Build a way to understanding and to self-bettering and self-empowerment. INFPs, you are people that I think can sometimes have too strong expectations for yourself. And that means you can disappoint yourself. If you want or dream of something or if you have a strong ideal, it is okay that that ideal is never going to translate perfectly into reality. It is okay that you're not always going to be the person you want to be. It is okay that you are not perfect in the world, but that you are perfect in your mind. It is fine that reality does not always translate 100% to your imagination. INFPs are people that I believe really need to build on themselves and so that means you need to really reconnect with yourself and so you need to have a place inside where you feel comfortable and accepted. If you don't feel accepted inside, you're not going to feel accepted outside and that is going to cause a lot of social anxiety and issues connecting with the world as a whole. I touched upon understanding your purpose and your identity and a part of that is really just uh, knowing yourself and understanding that self-knowledge is a process. You're going to discover a million things about yourself. So it's okay to change and to entertain new perspectives. More so, it's important to find a way to fulfill your purpose in the real world. And that means to be able to express yourself through some kind of medium. If you can't be honest with people around you, then find a blog or a place where you can anonymously post your thoughts and experiences, at least for yourself. Another important thing is to set realistic deadlines and expectations for yourself, and to not push yourself more than you need to be pushed. That means know how much force you can take before it's too much, know how much pressure is okay, and know how much pressure is not okay. First, before you take on a challenge, really take the time to breathe in. And that means really first center yourself. Go inside to find energy before you go out to push and to create and to make something of yourself. And recognize that your mind has a tendency to get distracted. And that means you're going to constantly evolve your thinking. Your thoughts are going to get distracted. You're going to change from an idea to a new idea. Your mind is constantly evolving, but when you have new ideas, just write them down and let yourself know you'll return to them later. Focus one idea at a time and write down when you get distracted and then come back to it later. Make a note of your thoughts, scribble, bring notebooks wherever you go. That's my advice for INFPs. I would also emphasize how important it is to give people time and room to understand you. That means to not expect people to immediately read your mind. Do not get, expect people to immediately know how to feel or how to express themselves or how to respond to what you're saying. That means let people process and ruminate on what you say and give people space to make up their own minds, just as you need to be given the space to make up yours. Use writing, art, or YouTube as a medium to practice expressing your thoughts and to explaining yourself and what you're feeling. And so, constantly stimulate yourself to be creative in how you do it. Find new ways to express yourself, new ways to put things, new quotes or uh, poetic riddles or expressions that fit with and explain the way you are really feeling. 
understand the nuances in wording and how the smallest change, the subtlest way of pronouncing a word or writing down a sentence can change the feeling in its entirety. And so, allow yourself uh, to be complex and to use symbols and to use imagery to express yourself. When people are looking at what you did or what you created, give them the room to have their own experiences and impressions to what you do. And that means just as you have your own impressions and experiences and feelings about what you do, other people are going to have theirs. Build and nurture self-acceptance both towards yourself and allow and extend to other people to also accept their own feelings and their own input as theirs. Never put forward your own feelings as what you think other people should feel. Never tell other people how they should feel about what you do. Give everyone the room to feel the way they want to feel. I would also say it's important to give yourself the freedom to make changes in your life. Be it a new career, a new study route, a new country. You're allowed to make changes in your life. You're allowed to change your mind on different opinions and political topics. You're allowed to move on in life. It is nothing wrong that your mind is changing. It's nothing wrong that you're learning to think about things differently. There is nothing wrong about the fact that you are a growing person, not a static person. Instead, it's something beautiful about it. It's something great about it. You have an uh, open-minded mind that's flexible, a mind that can change, and is a mind that can grow. And perhaps the most important advice is let people know when they're crossing your boundaries. And that means, for example, when they are pushing you to do something you don't want. Recognize when people are overwhelming you with their words or actions, when they are talking too much and you can, you're can you not able to keep up, when people are uh, pushing you to be too active or dragging you out into the world or uh, overwhelming you with ex attention and, and experiences. And say when you need a break, let people know that you're not going to be pushed into something. Let people know your boundaries and your limitations. Finally, I would say as the most crucial advice, create a sanctuary or a mind palace and give yourself breaks to explore this world whenever you want to. Go on mental adventures. Now, before I end this video, I want to give you all a quick sneak peek into a new theory I've been working on when it comes to INFP growth. So I believe people pass through four stages of growth. First, the radical phase, then the materialistic phase, then the post-materialistic phase, and finally the existential phase. So the radical phase tends to be characterized by strong or pure ideas or innocent or crazy or extreme ideas about one's identity and about the world. The sign of P tends to have exaggerated notions about the self and who that person is. Often the expressions, the self-expression is more extreme in this phase. And often we can form a kind of stereotyped version of ourselves and of who we are. The second phase is the materialistic phase and this is the state most associated with compromising on our own identity. Finding a job or a place or people or friends or a circle that fits who we are and who we feel we are and what we think our purpose is. Feeling that our identity has to be echoed in our actions and in our, the life we live. Wanting the life around us to match up to who we are and who we feel that we are. Then we have the post-materialistic phase, which is associated with uh, becoming conscious of uh, the things in your life that don't add up. The things in your life, the job that doesn't fit, the things that you do that don't match up to you, who you really are inside and what you really need to be happy. This is the phase of recognizing that you have the capacity and the resources to make changes in your life and knowing how to use those to build the life you really want. Recognizing that a job or a career or uh, things like that don't necessarily have to connect with who you are or what you do and that you can be yourself wherever you are, that you can be who you are wherever you want to be. The last phase is the existential phase associated with uh, 
being able to let go of uh, things that you've been unable to do throughout your life and being able to focus on and build a legacy for yourself. Now, if you want to find out more about these phases, so feel free to subscribe and become a Patreon or to become a YouTube member. If you enjoy these kind of videos, share and subscribe and help build this community bigger. If you have any own advice for NFPs, let me know in the comments down below. And as usual, see you all in the next video.